Okay, I'm going to whistle through some of this. And um, actually, I wonder if I can also put it in. Uh, I can't. I'll put it. I'll, I'll put. Um, I'll put it in the chat straight away after this as well, because um, there's a bit a bit more text. So, quite quickly, why do we want to think about audiences? Well, the theme of Refugee Week is we cannot walk alone, and that's an invitation, even more than normal, to reach beyond our usual circle and make new connections. And of course, arts and cultural approaches, which we focus on during Refugee Week, have the power to reach those wider audiences, including those who might not normally engage in this issue. I'm just gonna give you a few things that you might wanna think about, a few, some ways you might want to approach this. The first thing is to ask, which audience? What do you mean by you're saying, reaching a new audience or any audience at all? And this is one of these actions that is in a way really simple, but could also take you a lot of time. Think about the audiences you want to reach and why. You'll see, where I've got a bit more detail on this when I share the, the, the text, but the Refugee Week Theory of Change, which was new this year, has a few ideas about this. For example, arts and cultural audiences. Who are those people? This is what we at Counterpoints very often, and in a way the whole of Refugee Week is looking to target. People who are into arts and culture, but may not be that aware of issues relating to refugees. Existing supporters, that is a really important one. First, first of all, just to engage those people you know who are in favour of what you're doing, you will definitely want to go to them. But then in terms of a new audience, are those people who've kind of lapsed, the sort of passive supporters, can you get them more engaged? And can they invite people? Sorry, yeah, schools for Refugee Week is a really big, big audience. The opinion makers, the, the, the um, you know, the audiences of the future. One of the good things about schools, if you can make that connection, is that you can get a sort of captive audience if you can work with teachers, where you can reach a lot of people. And there's plenty of evidence also that school children will also have an influence on their families and the things that they learn in school. So you've thought about who your audiences might be. You obviously then need to think about what is your program or your event and to think about how you're going to match that content to that audience. And again, that could seem like very simple, but actually how often do we really think about that when we're planning our program? Who is going to be interested in this? What kind of content do we have access to? What maybe could we do differently? The kind of planning process you might want to think about when you're doing that is obviously to start with research. What are the events or programs that have inspired you and your team in the past, both in Refugee Week and at other times? Who do you know? Who might you have access to? And think about the maybe the artists or the organisations who already have good connections with those, that audience that you're trying to reach. The next thing I suggest you might want to think about is location. Where are the places you can go? Can you go into the shopping centre, the high street? Can you go somewhere different? How might you do that? Obviously, what is it you're going to do? How's that going to work? Then what I put here is what's the story? How will you catch people's imagination? You might have a great idea. How are you going to explain it to people? What is there in that idea that will capture imagination that will then have a wide appeal? And then finally, reuse, recycle is my heading for thinking about how you can present your work in different formats. If you know you're gonna do a certain event, a certain bit of programming, can it also go on Instagram? Can you do a Facebook Live? Can you share clips? How can you share it in the media? Possibly integral to all of this is to think about partners. I know that lots of you are probably experts on this already, but we always find there's always more thinking you can do about partners. One of the things we've, I've found working very well in the past couple of years is stand-up comedy and we had a project power project called No Direction Home and when we couldn't visit venues this year we partnered with people on a virtual tour 
Now, we didn't leave our respective homes, but each gig was in a location with a partner. The benefit of that was we we're reaching that partner's network. They didn't really have to do anything. If we had box office, we shared that box office, but the, it meant that we could reach a different audience. So it's really worth thinking about who those partners might be who can help you spread the word. Going back to the um, thinking about your event, comms, really, really important. If you're gonna reach an audience, to a certain extent, your comms can be part of reaching that audience. It's worth thinking about if you have really good messaging and imagery around an event that's really, for example, really positive in terms of Refugee Week, if people are just sharing that, even if they don't come, people are seeing that text, and imagery and that has its own power even if people don't turn up on the day you're still spreading the word you maybe you're still getting on local radio and being part of the press so i would just think about that as a whole thing also as your audience so it also gives you an incentive to make your uh your comms around the event really really good to to really focus on the message that you want to get across I'm going to shut the presentation now and I'll just put this simple text in the chat. We'll also share it afterwards. Hopefully it's just giving you a little framing. Um, you can always get in touch with me. Obviously, there's lots of information on Refugee Week and I'll be I'll come back on a couple of things through the meeting. But next, I'm going to find out who we're um, introducing. It's Usman. So we've got two guest speakers to give you a little insight from different ways that they've approached um, new audiences. And first up is Usman Khalid, who was one of our comedians at the start of No Direction Home, but he's probably better known to you all um, as the founder and director of Haven Coffee, um, which have provided the coffee for Refugee Week conference in recent years. And, I'm sure if Usman had a way of virtually delivering you coffee, he would. But um, Usman, over to you. Uh, hey guys, hey everyone, hello everyone. Uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, I really love uh, the way Tom was uh, promoting Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook in the start, uh, the, the time he took. Uh, I won't take much of your time. Uh, so let me quickly get into the slides. So, so hi. Uh, um, yeah, uh, oh, I need to share the screen as well, sorry. Uh, yeah. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, great. Uh, so hi, uh, my name is Usman, and like Tom mentioned, I am the founder of uh, a social enterprise uh, name of Haven Coffee. And we are a social enterprise where we serve ethically sourced uh, fair trade coffee to the local communities but uh, we have a social mission also and the social mission is to work with refugees uh, and refugee artists to promote their artwork uh, and breaking the false narratives uh, and celebrate the contribution of uh, refugee and migrant art and artists uh, in the society uh, so uh, <laughs> and we, we uh, how we do that we do it do it through different projects, uh, uh, different art projects like comedy gigs. We, uh, until today, we have done two comedy gigs uh, with the name of La Facino, uh, one, one last December and one uh, the year before. Then uh, last year during Refugee Week, we also did uh, uh, an online exhibition uh, with the name of, with a, uh, with a theme of isolation. Uh, and we also uh, have done a couple of podcasts as well under the name of Migrant Grounds in collaboration with another organization. Uh, so I'll quickly jump on to how we reached our audience and how we started uh, working towards because uh, audience and customers uh, were our main uh, backbone, main uh, uh, target to, 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 to gain. So first thing, I, I really, I really think that the networking, the, the power of networking, is, uh, is, is, is very, very important, because uh, uh, this is what, what I did in the start. I started working uh, with 
counterpoints arts uh, and i only knew counterpoints arts but then from counterpoints arts i uh, started uh, knowing so many other people so many other organizations and started building networks uh, my networks and networks means audience because once you build your network their followers become your followers eventually as well their followers become your target market target audience eventually as well our business model is very uh, uh, very 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 helpful for us to engage with more audience because we do market stalls where every day we meet so many different people so we have a chance to speak with so many different people uh, uh, at our market stalls to 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 engage and to give our message uh, of uh, uh, supporting refugees and uh, uh, our social uh, mission uh, another thing which we thought on our coffee bags we at the back of our coffee bags we had a message we had a uh, we had a art print printed by a migrant artist and we had a message about what we actually do what our social mission is so whoever is buying our coffee bags is getting that message uh, in their post as well uh, <laughs> speak their language means uh, when you start uh, engaging with, with 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 an audience don't just uh, throw what you want them to listen just start engaging engage with them in a conversation first listen to them as well not just speak so first break the ice and then start talking about your uh, 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 talking about what you want them to uh, to hear which is which will be more easier than uh, as well uh, i already mentioned we 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 done comedy gigs and uh, exhibitions uh, we had like nish kumar as our headliner at our comedy gigs which really helped us a lot to bring a lot uh people a lot of audience and not just the audience who are uh, refugee focused or uh, cause focused the audience who were also interested in, in comedy only so we have a varied range of uh, audience we got from uh, those comedy gigs uh, again collaborations uh, are an amazing uh, way to uh, increase your audience because again uh, like i mentioned earlier when you collaborate with other organizations when you uh, do an event for example the uh, 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 the podcast i just mentioned i worked on the podcast with a, uh, a production company uh, rlc production so their audience was heaven's audience and our audience were their audience as well so uh, when you collaborate with uh, other you shared resources and uh, and audience uh, uh, is a resource which you share as well again <laughs> we have uh, I've, i've spoken with so many print media as well i've given interviews in the media i've, I've write articles in the media, in in some print uh, uh, publications uh, which is a good way to reach uh, a different type of audience as well and then of course digital uh, like social media instagram facebook and uh, twitter is also a good way uh, uh, okay there is another thing recently i have uh, i came uh, i understood the volunteering uh, and influ influencers i already knew but volunteering can some sometimes be very very helpful as well because if you have a volunteer working with you who happens to have a big following on their social accounts or on their instagram or uh, uh, so uh, that volunteer can bring a lot of traffic to you as well a lot of audience to uh, to you as well and influencers you already know i think uh, what influencers are uh, quickly in the end uh, uh, because this is uh, all about uh, audience reach as well so i will try to reach each and every one of you as well uh, our uh, Uh, these are our upcoming projects which we are planning to do uh, we are planning to do another uh, art exhibition during this refugee week uh, then uh, finger crossed uh, the venues are opening up so we are going to do uh, another comedy gig during refugee week uh, with the name of lafacino and uh, we are also working on a short film uh, uh, on the workforce exploitation in migrant community 
and then we are also uh, trying to uh, uh, do a live stage performance uh, 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 with the name of life of a DJ uh, in collaboration with Compass Collective. Uh, we are also looking to expand now and uh, uh, we started uh, doing this crowdfunding. Uh, the link is here, of course. Uh, and uh, if, yeah, if you guys want, you can have a, have a look at it. We, are, we always uh, look for volunteers uh, and on the bottom of the screen, you can see all our uh, information as well. Uh, the first one is uh, our Instagram and Twitter, and then the email address and the website and the WhatsApp number. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Usman. Let me see how I can. How can I? You're just going to leave that up there the whole time, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Um, there's lots of really good practical suggestions there. I think also what I always take from what Usman does is that he is on this the whole time. He's not thinking about audiences. Oh, I'm going to do something, or maybe about thinking about audiences. Usman's approach to his what's <laughs> his life is kind of connecting and reaching out and making new contact. He's always open to meeting new people. He puts himself. He he does what he says and he listens to other people and what they want. Um, and that's why he's, yeah, that's part of why he's doing so well. Um, Usman, I'll leave, there's some comments and questions in the, we'll have a Q and A after, um, after the next speaker, but also Usman, if you want to respond to any of these um, in the chat, but now, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, I'm going to invite Julia Ciccolella to speak. She's the editor of Echo magazine. Julia, over to you. Thanks, Tom. Um, and hi, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen as well. Just a second. Um, I hope you can all see it OK. Yeah, I think that's a yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we're Echo Magazine. Um, we're a volunteer-led um, non-profit creative platform for migrants, volunteers, and activists. Um, my name, oh, my name is Julia. Um, I'm a media and communication student at Goldsmiths University in London. I'm in my third year, so I'm about to graduate, and I moved to the UK in 2018. And I founded Echo after volunteering in Greece um, and engaging with migratory birds. Um, that's a newspaper written um, and edited by migrant, Greek and refugee youth, um, and it's published in five different languages. I'd encourage you to um, look it up. I'll send a link later in the chat, but this is mainly the, that, that's the main inspiration for ECHO. And I'm also a member of STAR, Student Action for Refugees. And as Tom said, I'm currently the editor-in-chief for ECHO. Um, what we do with ECHO is that we really focus on accessibility and inclusivity. Um, we're publishing in three different languages. So in English, Arabic and Farsi. And um, on this slide, you can see pictures of our latest issue that we just published and printed. Um, and you can see how we lay it out in a way that like all languages are on the same page and are mixed together because that's what we understand under inclusivity as well. And the reason why we're doing this is because not everyone um, who comes to the UK or comes to Europe speaks English or is just about to learn it maybe. Um, and we want to give the people the option to submit pieces or artwork in their mother language. Um, and we're focusing on Arabic and, and Farsi now. Um, but hopefully one day we can publish in even more languages. Um, so we're quite an international project that consists of an international team. We um, have had contributors from 22 different countries, um, which is quite impressive, actually, I'd say. Um, and the, the people were from like countries such as Nigeria or Estonia to Vietnam, um, and our translators, our team as well, um, is quite international. We have people from Iran, from Greece, from Germany, Belgium, um, and also the editorial team is based all over the UK. 
so these are just these are the countries where people are living at and then um on top comes like their nationality which is sometimes mixed or like comes from places all over the world so that's really really exciting and makes the project exciting um and we also try to distribute worldwide um sounds a bit scary worldwide or a bit like big but i think like the the most far away distribution not sure if that was correct english but you know what i mean um that was in lebanon um and also to iran and we're also providing um issues um printed issues to refugee camps in greece so what tom was mentioning about the partners that's what we do we have partners in greece we have partners in lebanon um and then we're sending them and in the uk and europe but yeah, then we're sending um, them copies, printed copies, um, and they make sure that they get distributed. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what we do. On top of that, we also have art workshops. Um, and before the pandemic, we actually plan to um, hold or facilitate, facilitate these art workshops in uh, London and Lewisham where we are based. Um, but because of the pandemic, we then switched to online art workshops. And that actually helped us quite a lot because we reached people from all over Europe again. Um, and we were able to share this with our social media um, audience and community. So that was really great. And uh, we're having these bi-weekly workshops um, together with a teacher and yeah, people from all over the world. And that really helps as well with reaching our audience. Um, Lastly, um, what I also wanted to say is that um, in terms of partners, again, we're now collaborating with Counterpoints Arts on a, a special Refugee Week UK edition for ECHO. And the topic is We Cannot Walk Alone. Um, you can see on the side there's the prompt card and it's also published in three languages because, again, we encourage people to submit their work in their mother language if they don't feel comfortable in doing that in English. Um, and I just wanted to say if any one of you is interested in writing or knows anyone who, who might be interested in submitting some poetry or um, prose or even some artwork, paintings, illustrations, then um, you can still do so until the 1st of March, so until Monday. Um, and I'll share all the links with you just in a second. But yeah, that's what we're currently working on um which will hopefully give us a bigger audience as well um, or reach more audiences and then we're also having a writing workshop this saturday which if you're interested you can still sign up for um and this one's hosted by lila something and again this is a way how we want to engage new audiences people coming together and i think yeah it's just great if if people repost, as Tom said, if people share and repost graphics, um, because in that way you can also share or get new audiences um, and share what is important to you. So, yeah, um, I feel like I've been rushing through it, but if you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, or contact us via email. Um, we also got a website, which I will post in the chat in a second, and you can follow us on Instagram. Um, just to sum up, as, as I said, I think social media is very important, publishing in different languages or making it as inclusive and um, accessible as possible is very important. And then just partnering up with other organizations. And that's what we're trying to do with Echo. So thanks for listening. Thanks, Julia. I can see those are all the comments and reactions of people, how impressed they are by what you've done. And I think certainly we at Counterpoints and the Refugee Week, when we saw Echo magazine, were just so struck by what a fantastic quality job they've done. And also this commitment to translation, which is really you know not an easy thing to undertake. And they've undertaken it in a really serious way. So partly this was a chance for you all to see that and to learn about what's coming. I think um, 
again, it's about partnerships. The other thing that strikes me is because the the visual quality and, and the writing quality of what you do, Julia, is so good that every time that gets shared and exchanged, that's sending a message, however much or little people engage with it. If you can make things, if everything you do kind of embodies the message, um, and that has a real impact. Um, and shortly, we're going to um, put people who want to into um, breakout rooms, and we can talk about uh, things that you've heard or ideas that you've had, experiences that you've had, and just share in small groups about ideas for reaching audiences. But we've got a bit of time for Q and A. Um, so let's have a look at um, if people have got questions or comments or things that they know or at the moment they want to share that they know have worked really well. Um, but yeah, there's a chance now. Have a think if you've got questions for either Usman or Julia or for myself or for the crowd that we have here. I would like to thank everybody who uh, joined into our Facebook sharing. We are um, just looking at the page now. The number of engagements on that post is more than 100. 100, more than 120 um, and 39 shares and that will end up being thousands of people reached with that video so that shows if you've got a group of people together and they're willing to share the content that's a really quick and easy way of getting that stuff out one thing to add on that is that it's you should always have some obviously anyone who sh you should only share content obviously with informed consent that people know where it's going to go but also just be aware um, of monitoring the comments on Facebook because that obviously is a public space um, and it is possible that we especially during refugee week when those people who like to you know, post unpleasant things. We have someone at the moment on Refugee Week Facebook who likes to post an angry face on many of our posts. And it turns out there's, you can't, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, I, you know, you can't block, you can block people posting comments, you can report them, you can't do anything. The, the only, I think the, 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 um, the saving grace of it is that does actually help your engagement. So they're, they, they're unwittingly, they're making people more likely to read your post because Facebook doesn't care whether people like or hate, it just wants reactions. So you can comfort yourself with that. Um, so you'll see there in the chat, and we'll share this afterwards as well, Judith shared all her, all her chats. Um, so there's a question about how to balance reaching wider audiences with engaging newly arrived people. And I know in at counterpoints and refugee week widely, we're often thinking that those are the two really important audiences for us. So refugees and asylum seekers are a really important core audience, but we also want to reach that wider audience. Julia and Usman, could you, I think you probably touched on this a bit, but do you have those different, do you see those as different audiences? And if so, how do you approach them? Julia, do you wanna go first? Yeah, I can go um, first. I think that's what I meant with the languages, that not everyone speaks English or understands English perfectly. And I'm not a native speaker. So for me, at the beginning coming here, that was also really difficult. And um, thinking about like the people that you want to reach um, and then trying to make it as accessible for them to actually engage with your content is what you can do via language and translation and then also the other thing is that um, we've struggled with that a bit um, also with in terms of accessibility with the printed version of the issue like how big or how small do you make the text fund and these are all things that one should consider I think um, to really think of like the people you want to reach and um, to keep it as open as possible. I'm not sure if I'm just repeating myself. Um, no, that's yeah. good. I'm going to go, I'll go to Usman in a moment. I'm just going to do another bit of, um, well, 
let's say it's illustrative rather than promotional. But this is a, the next stand up comedy gig that we're doing. And you'll see for that one, we're again, we're partnering with, uh, um, with Usman and Haven and also Turn. And you can see the kind of um, messaging we can do around that. We've been able to have a professional comedian as well as people from our group. Usman, if you're there, your camera's off, but any thoughts about engaging refugees and asylum seekers as well as those wider audiences? Yeah, so uh, I think the, I'll get back to uh, this the point again uh, uh, about the business model, the, the the product we are giving to others also, uh, uh, which makes uh, us in a very good position to uh, to to reach a, a, a very people because everyone drinks coffee, uh, uh, even uh, like. Uh, Boris Johnson drinks coffee as well, and someone, 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 some, uh, and uh, someone on the very left drinks coffee as well. So, uh, so we have we we we, and that's why I choose uh, 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 this uh, business as well to start with coffee business, and then add to a social mission to it that people do come to our coffee stores, people do like a good cup of coffee, and then uh, regard then where you can target them then where you can speak uh, speak with them as well so i think i think uh, so personally for me i never had any issue i don't know why i never had any issue uh, with uh, engaging different uh, uh, people either they are from uh, from this country or any other country or uh, regardless of their uh, uh, ethnicity regardless of their uh, uh, language skills uh, or regardless of their uh, their backgrounds it's it's Again, you like you mentioned, uh, if you if you listen them first, if you listen people first, then uh, they're more uh, uh, tend to listen to you afterwards as well. Instead of if you start jumping on the things and start speaking with them uh, straight away and not don't don't give them a space. So I think yeah, if I'm on the thanks, track, thanks. that's the answer. Otherwise, bin it. <laughs> I just quickly jump in again because I uh, I've got one more point. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I think universal themes is also something that is very important to reach audiences, and that's what we do with our topics. So the last issue was called healing. The one before was called hope, and these are universal themes themes that everyone can somehow relate to. And I think that's something. Um, what I also really liked about the session this morning with Carlos, uh, the the warm up where we all were sharing our similarities um, and that's something that could reach bigger audiences. That's a really great point. We're going to go to break and before we do, I just wanted to share three just little examples of that we've seen in Refugee Week in recent years that I think um, have been really effective. Doing One of them is what Usman says about working with coffee shops. Partly that's also because coffee comes from somewhere, there's stories there. Coffee shops are often interested, they're places where people might linger a bit. They could be, a, they could be places you could partner with. There was a great um, program uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I think Emily will correct me one, was it, was it in Norwich with the sandwich shops or was it in, was it in Cheltenham? What? Yeah, Norwich with the cafes. Norwich, when they worked with a series of cafes around Norwich, each of whom did themed sandwiches during Refugee Week, so linked to a different cultural uh, food to do a Refugee Week sandwich. What was, was particularly lovely about that was that was in, it wasn't just in one place. So you had that sense of all around town, people are um, seeing this in a kind of everyday way. And then another one slightly in a similar vein, we were talking to, um, Brighton uh, City of Sanctuary about this subject and Richard said you know, they have a fantastic program every year of arts events and music and festivals and he said funnily enough the thing that we felt did best at reaching new audiences was when two guys had a stall at the village fete. I think they were two guys originally from Syria they just had a stall and I, I can't Emily do you remember what it was that they had on the stall was it they were um, I'm going to say I think there was food and music. Yeah. 
um, Richard might correct me. The, what, what Richard said was this was the simplest thing to organise. It cost nothing. Through the day, those guys spoke like, probably to hundreds of people. And he just said it felt it, it impacted that whole event of people who wouldn't normally come to their other programming. So it's not to say that one is better, better, better than the other because you can see that both have their different roles. But if you start by thinking, where is this audience? Where, where is the audience you want to reach? Rather than we can spend a lot of time trying to persuade people to come to us, to come what we're do to what we're doing. Can we go to them? And, and finally, another example I remember from a few years ago, and we see this in different ways, a, a museum in Doncaster who had um, object handling in the markets, so they had a stall in the market square and it's objects and migratory histories to do with um, to do with uh, the people could come and talk about and talk about their own, whoever they were, their own migratory histories. Um, I'm going to ask Emily to put you in the breakout rooms also because I've just got a delivery. Um, so <laughs> Emily, over to you.